Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're shooting this video, the August 29th video one from the empty sanctuary. Wanted you to be able to see just a little bit of what it looks like without any pews in here and with uh, some of the boxes in storage. Now, we've got people that are upstairs working to hang the chandeliers. So if you hear some binging and banging or hear some people shouting, you know what's going on. And we're working in just that kind of way. But I wanted to share a little bit of commentary with you from the story that's coming to us out of the 11th chapter of Numbers. It's uh, about Moses and God, and it's very comical, almost comical, the way that God and Moses interact with one another. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go along. But the one thing we want to remember is that God is always with us. God meets us right where we are. God invites us to come and to be with God from wherever we come from. And God is always waiting. God is always with us. And the Holy Spirit knows what's going on in your life. And the Lord will give you the power that you need, often by directing your thoughts and your affections. So let me share with you a little bit about this dialogue between God and Moses. And sometimes we just need to read the Bible a little bit slower. Uh, not so much trying to gather in a quantity, but looking at the content of what's in the scripture. And I never really noticed that before in this 11th chapter of Numbers, how almost comical it is, the dialogue between God, but how important that it is. It seems almost more like a vaudeville comedy sketch than it does a discussion between God Almighty and God's leader, Moses. And it's a, it's a struggling time. God is talking about what God is going to do to meet the needs of the people, and Moses questions that. And then the Lord himself says, well, is the arm of God too short? And likewise, a little while later in the dialogue, Moses does the same thing in the conversation leading up to this chat. He said, I'm not able to carry all of this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If, you'll, if you're going to treat me like this, just kill me at once if I find favor in your sight. Have you ever thought about God speaking like that? Well, viewer, give the Lord and Mo a break. Uh, God and Moses are discussing Moses' role as the leader of the 600,000 plus refugees from slavery in Egypt. These people have only been free for about two years. They're traveling across the desert. They've been enslaved for 430 years prior to this. They don't really know where they're going. They don't know when they're gonna get there. They don't know what they're supposed to do in betwixt and between. Life is hard, but God knows all of this. And the Holy Spirit is working with the people. Sometimes they're not aware of that because they're just not paying attention. But God is always aware of what the people have going on. The beauty is that the Holy Spirit of God is always with us, closest to, closer to us than the air that we breathe, and is working on our behalf. Now, God does not automatically fix things as if by magic, poof, and things are fixed. God can do that, but it's not usually the way that my experience has been that God chooses to do that. God tends to work through us to give us ideas, to help us to recognize the strengths in ourselves and in the people around us and the situations that are our hands. God empowers us to be the best people God can has made us to be so that we can help ourselves and we can help others be the best people they can be, therefore making it more on earth like it is in heaven. So Moses was complaining about having to do all of this work of having to feed people uh, without much resource at all. And God says, bring me 70 of your Israel's leaders. Bring me these people, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to speak to them. All of you, all 71 of you, I'm going to speak to you. And I'm going to take a share of the Holy Spirit that I have put on you and put on these 70 so that they can lead. Well, you know, with 70 leaders working with 600,000 people, instead of Moses having to take care of 600,000 people, each person is going to take about 8,625 people if you do the math that way. And God says, tell the people, I want you to consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now, the Lord will give you meat and you will eat it. 
The Lord hears us as we cry out. The Lord hears us as we talk. The Lord speaks to us. Might we have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to accept what it is God is doing on our behalf. Here's your task for video one. I'd invite you to go back and read the 11th chapter of the book of Numbers in its entirety. It won't take you but three or four minutes. Read the whole chapter 11. Notice while you read what the people are doing. Notice what God is doing. Think about how your life is similar to the lives of those Hebrew refugees. And remember what God has done for you and what God is doing for you currently. I believe if you will do these five things, you will feel better about your life and you will gain some insight into actions that you can take under the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. So let me invite you to turn this video off, do these five steps, and when you're ready to come back to video two for August the 29th, come back on right where you came from here. Between now and then, may the peace of the Lord be with you and may God rich you bless, rich, bless you richly. Amen.